So, all right, this is it, final episode of the season. And, yep, much better improvement, much more improved than last season. Uh, so, we are hopefully this one's going to be like the final signature saying, yep, we ended on a high note. So, I don't know where we're going to go. At this point, I doubt we're going to be losing Graham, Ryan, or Yaz in this episode. Maybe the New Year's or Christmas special, maybe later on in the year. But as it stands, I don't think we're going to be missing out, missing them anytime soon. As for the timeless child, I'm curious. I'm, I'm going to speculate now. Um, a timeless child is the 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 first iteration of of Gallifreyans being turned into Time Lords, from which all Time Lords are derived. It's like some sort of biological component. That makes the makes the, the certain Gallifreyans Time Lords. That's the best I got. I honestly have no idea. They built up the fact that the Timeless Child is going to appear, but they never really built up what it was. Which again, I guess is a good sort of little little um, red herring. I mean, it's no Bad Wolf where the mystery was why would it why it kept appearing, or Torture World was what why did why people keep talking about it. So, yeah, at this point, it's anyone's guess. Let's give it a watch, shall we? Hey, tissue compressor! Oh, wow, he's usually talking about... Master always talks about games. Here they come with an entire army of Cybermen. Oh, boy. Can't say we ever got to know who the rebels were on Genesis of the Daleks, so can't really say we've got to know who the remnant humans are. <laughs> What's he wearing? Easy there, Ozymandias. Ooh, good Percy Shelley callback, though. Very clever. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I love this. Actually, actually, I instant connection. Love it. Um. Oh, wow. It's like the Dalek plan. Well, that's, that's a new way of doing it. Yeah. So back in Gallifrey, properly destroyed. This is like we missed out. I love his I love his attitude. That's sweet. Oh come on, give him give him a bit more. Thank you. What? <laughs> oh, that's cool. They have like cyber armor. You, they better deliver on this. They better deliver and give him like a fight against the Cybermen using cyber weapons, like Bill. Oh no, I'm falling. Could have done that with another tech, maybe. There's a billion years of Time Lord history to, to consider. Oh, wow, it's already here. Oh, uh, Dyspraxia, don't, have, don't hurt him now. Good man! Didn't that Dyspraxia hurt him? <laughs> He's like a, he's like a Moriarty. <laughs> Moriarty for evil villains. He's getting really frustrated. But, well, come on, tell me. Oh. I knew it. Oh. 
What? The doctor is the first one to regenerate. I'm not sure how to feel about that. It makes her special, like more special than if she was just a normal time lord running away, but it also makes sense why the doctor was constantly making. Hey! <laughs> I bet he's just making that up to confuse her. I bet he's making that up just to confuse her, just to throw her off. Zap. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Easy there, Warris. Hmm. Come on! Just, it's in there. Just get in there and extr extract it. Ireland. Oh. Oh. That's where that doctor came from. She was a member of the division, and that's why they were chasing her. A monster. Cyber Lords. Against who? Oh, wow. Whoa. This is the first time I've seen this. Yes. Good woman, yes. <laughs> Time for us to be proactive companions. That's her all in the end connected to Time Lord somehow. Oh, that'd be a twist. So if like she's the Rani or she or the he's he, he's Barusa or he's Rassalon. Wouldn't that be some shit? Ha <laughs> Like when she's being insightful. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone needs a good natter with themselves every once in a while. Wow. Ah! <laughs> yes! I love those little callbacks. I don't know why, it's just strum strums at her nostalgia chords. It's like, here's all the doctors! Thrum. No, expecting them to expecting their them to save her with that. Hey, fam. Uh, you know, I think about it. You are sort of going like this, and you're sort of eyeballing it. No wonder they can't hit a thing.
He escaped. I know he did. He escaped the fifth dimension house? What's going on here? Oh, what? Oh, what? On. <laughs> okay, we have a lot to discuss here, and I put it all down in the blue book. Let's go. So, prison. Possibly Stormgate. I'm guessing it sort of might, might be able to actually see the inner workings of how this whole prism system works. If not, then it's just another random storm uh, space prison. Let's go. Then let's go with that. And who knows? Maybe we might get a return to River. Maybe we might see Captain Jack pop in, save her. Like maybe that's why. Maybe yeah, uh, yeah. Says like, hey, Captain. You know, uh, Doctor has, has gone missing. Can you help us find her? It's like, a, it's like a team mission to help rescue the Doctor. Not sure how they're going to balance that with the Daleks and everything. This could be a huge cluster. Uh, if they can somehow connect it, like the Daleks somehow framed her or something like that. I, I'd like that. I'd actually like it if the Daleks were more than just, we'll kill everything. They actually are diabolical. They can actually... Uh, set plans in motion where like, we can remove the Doctor out of, this, out of the way. Out of the way, we don't have to deal with with them directly. But um, that remains to be seen. Uh, let's see what else is there. I'm I'm a firm believer that the master has become a complete nihilist. I mean, after what the what the doc, what the master has just seen, their whole life is predicated on the fact that the doctor is their inferior. They're the master. That's why they call themselves that. So when it comes to this, saying everything um, is because of you. Totally called it, by the way. Totally called it. I said so. Thomas Child is the precursor basis for all time over regeneration. Called it. So, yeah, for the Master to say, like, like you, uh, everything I am is because of the Doctor, it's probably caused him a huge change of consciousness. You, I, in fact, there's also the fact that the, the miss the missy we knew who was befriending the doctor not only was was did the master constantly find out that the time was used him there they used their friend to give him regeneration but there's also the fact that the dark time was just completely lied to them and used the doctor for all these years so it's like now we have a speculation about whether Maybe the Master has just completely lost it. Maybe the Master has finally become a nihilistic entity within the universe. He didn't, he didn't even seem to care that the, not only was the Time Lords wiped out, but all of life could be wiped out. It's like, robots, really? I think he honestly expected all life to just be completely wiped out. But he was willing to accept death from the Doctor. So, phew. That's pretty depressing to think about the Master. Pretty fascinating villain arc, uh, villain dynamic. I'm loving their chemistry. I liked it in the Spy Falls two-parter. I love it more here. I actually see, see a bit of like that. No, those interactions where he's like, you know, I don't, I don't want to do any part of this. I don't want to cause you any more pain. It, it sounded genuine. It sounded like he genuinely cared. His friend was hurting. But there's also a little nugget of satisfaction in him. Like, it kind of like when a friend ribs you. You know, they're like, like ah, you, you dirty bastard. What are you doing? What are you talking about? Like, you know, they, they'll they play a prank on you. They'll they'll mess around with you. And, but only they can, only they can do that. No one else can. So, for this, I think he's completely broke. And he's definitely alive. No one, no one brings the master back and just wipes him out off screen. He survived the fifth dimension. I bet that's where he's escaped back to. I hope they bring back the ton the cyber lords because those guys look badass. Plus, the new design is pretty damn cool. 
so hopefully we'll see more of them in the next season. Uh, I need to address the fact that there seems to be a lot of ma discontent for the Doctor being this sort of archetype chosen one. They're not. The Master... Uh, the Master points out that the Doctor really he was just an abandoned science experiment. That's all the Doctor was. A tool to be used by the Time Lords. An abandoned child, washed up in our reality, or maybe even just manifest itself true into our reality, or just some precursor entity, spiritual device that the Time Lords used and just cultivated over the years. And that's that's almost, that's pretty depressing for a character origin. I mean, it's not it, it doesn't make the Doctor a chosen one. There is there is an argument to be made that they are more special, that they are unique. They're not even Time Lord. But arguably, Time Lord isn't isn't even like a thing. Time Lord is what is what he what the Doctor is, and what everyone everyone in Gallifrey became was a Time Lord. In the same way, River Song gained regeneration energy by exposure to the Time Vortex. Maybe the maybe the Doctor was just a Gallifreyan who was born into the Time Vortex. Maybe that's how he got his got his regeneration energy. It work, works work, works for Canon, but it also explains his renegade tendencies. Why he has a tendency to intervene in other realities and other times, and. Why the, why the Doctor seems to always be in a placement of power. He's always President of the Earth, President of the Time Lords, or it's our, some high-ranking Time Lord official, a general, someone the Time Lords feared, like, oh, don't go near him, he's too powerful. And the, that would, it's all come back to the division. This division of intervening Time Lords, how it ties back to the, the Irish guy and it was always an experiment. Their attempt to say, hmm, we have time travel, we have the ability to live forever, is it possible that we can... Is it possible that we can develop a techn develop the technology to reshape reality? And that's what they did through this. They realized, no, we can't. And that's why we have that they have that state of no intervention, because they realized through the doctor's policy, through the doctor's actions and experiments, this is just gonna end up battling for us. And it does it, it is sort of a familiar notion that uh, throughout the doctor's childhood it's just a case of neglect and abuse. And not even abuse, but just a lack of care. The poor doctor has been raised in a multitude of facets, from being a time lord in the academy, not wanting to be part, he has to sleep apart from everyone, he lives apart from everyone, he doesn't think like anyone, and he seems to be gained the attention of the likes of the monk, Balrusa, Rassilon, even though he is considered an outcast, an underachiever. For me, this makes just makes him feel more like an outcast. The Doctor truly is uh, an entity all his own, but it's a, it's similar to uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender, in that the avatars are actually the manifest the physical manifestation of this entity, while the timeless child that's who the Doctor is. The timeless child is the spirit, the Rava entity, the force that makes up the, the, the person and it's a case of, of regeneration and recycle and rebirth and renewal that makes the doctor a different person. I mean, it also works with the continuity of how we can suddenly give the doctor a, a new range of regenerations. Essentially, I think they were just saying, okay, now, you know, now you can actually unlock all your regenerations or we just unlock the 13 more regenerations in your cycle. 
That also makes explains why everyone's everything is so dependent on Doctor Who. I mean, everyone keeps saying like, "Oh, the Doctor is this, is just this one man in, in a box." That's all everyone ever says. It's like, guys, it's a show about the Doctor. We, every episode is about the Doctor saving someone. It's always about the Doctor being the be all end all, the the warrior, the magician, the trickster. Some how a lot of history is dependent on him, and how a lot of lore and magic and mystery comes from his origin story. It's pretty much, I don't think it's too far of a stretch to say introducing the Doctor as the precursor to the Time Lords is that far of a stretch for any other Time Lord lore that's been, that's been in this universe for the past 50 years. Uh, But when I said earlier about going back to um, Yaz, um, I think she's. I think next season will be the one for her to step up because apparently uh, Bradley, Bradley, uh, Bradley and Toshin are dropping out, which that's sad to see them go. But I do think it's good for them to leave on their own terms. It's good that we that we don't, we don't overstay their welcome. And it does feel like their arcs are almost complete. But Yaz, with the introduction in that in the previous episodes, where she suffers from anxiety and and uh, lack and isolation, it feels like the Doctor actually is having an impact on her life to a point where, when they leave, she's like, "I want to stay with you. I want to stay with the Doctor. She's the only one that gets me." And if so, I hope we get some 13 Yasmin uh, adventures, like just those two. Be more balanced, more time, more dedication, more focused. It'd be much more easily developed. And I really hope we get, get, to, get to that point. Right. And I'll be honest, I might have edited this out in my previous episode reaction. I hope we get Thasmin. Yeah, I know we, I know we have... Uh, the Doctor and River, and the Doctor and who knows others. I kind of want to see the see another Doctor Who romance with, with one of their companions. I kind of miss it. I mean, I kind of miss it. So that'd be that'd be cool if we can get uh, the Yasmin and the Doctor and Thirteen uh, in a relationship together. That might be fun. I mean, even even uh, Mandip is Mandibil is actually quite pro the idea. She's actually for it. And hey, all the more representation, if I say so. So all this, all these sort of new elements being introduced, I think it's good. I like it. At first I thought, hmm, wait a minute, I'm not sure how I feel about this. I was kind of hoping for something like it would be Susan or Jenny or something in the past brought back but the more I think about it it is good that we're actually expanding and developing the lore so many times people are saying oh yeah that it's it's good for the mystery so that the fans can speculate when did the fans ever know what they wanted when have they ever said to themselves ah you know what this is this is perfect just as it is no changes no they keep they keep speculating and making a making ex, uh, their own anecdote and ex, explanations for things. And they hardly ever pan out. They're ridiculous, they're over the top. And, you know, you can still do it. You can still write lore novels, you can write ex, extended universe, alternate history, alternate universe. It's there. It's not, it's not just your story, though. I much prefer things that give solid answers rather than say um, Lost or Twin Peaks where it was just a mystery like we need to keep the mystery like no you don't need the mystery you need to give us good character you need to give us good story and I like this story I like to see it explored more I like to see this expansion to the universe explored more and not just contain it to like you know this is our t this is our safe bubble this is our bubble where we can, where nothing happens, nothing changes. It's always consistent. I mean, if all, if anything, this just adds 
asks us even more questions. You know, what, did, what did the doctor do during the time? Is that is that doctor she met in the Jidun adventure also also part of the division? I guess she. I'm assuming she is. But if that's not the case, what's the what's the other explanations? You know, what did what the doctor get up to? What was the how did the doctor actually come about? How did they become shaped by the, by Gallifrey society? There's a lot of new questions opening up, and we're not we're not using what's given to us as a means of exploring it. We'd much rather just write it up as, oh no, it was just one writer, they don't know what they're doing, we'll just wreck on it in the next season. Listen, not only only to realize you guys are actually hating the fact that they're retconning. Uh, not you guys, not you guys, you're you're great. But I mean, like, a lot of fans don't like the fact that we're retconning the Doctor's history. You know, it's always the first Doctor. No. If you look up retcon, like I did on Google, the, ex the explanation and example for what a retcon is, is literally a Doctor Who scene. You know what, I'm gonna look it up right here. And if it has if it's changed by the by the time you look it up, I'm going to I'll eat my shoe. But at least you know here what it is. Retcon. Noun. Let's see. In a film, television series, or other fictional work, a piece of new information that imposes a different interpretation on previously on previously described events, typically used to facilitate a dramatic plot shift or account for an, a consistency. And the, and the example I give? We're given a retcon for Wilf's absence from Donna's wedding in The Runaway Bride. He had Spanish flu. Doctor Who is literally a textbook definition of retconning. The fact that we decided to say, say oh, this is one retcon too far. No. This is just another bit of lore in an ever-expanding universe. I mean, we this season we got the fact that there were gods that existed. We got the fact that there were entities beyond our comprehension. That there was ta time and society before the Time Lords. That there was a manifestation of, of beings outside our dimension. That there were parallel universes. We got that before, but now this is like proper different parallel universes. This is like the space between spaces, voids, and we need, we should explore this to its fullest extent. This is this is amazing. Was everything in this episode perfect? No, I think some of, some of the delivery was wooden. I think some of the reactions were underwhelming. I love that connection she has with her companions, and I love that she's very she's very soft. She's very friendly, but she's so firm. And I love that they give her that range, that range in these in these episodes, where she just flips on a dime. It's like, it's like, don't touch me. And you know, just toss the master ground like, give me your answers. And the fact that that even when with Yaz, she's like, like, don't, don't stop me. Don't, don't do anything. You've been intervening me, intervening against me this entire time. And that sounds like fun. This season has opened up a whole new realm of potential for the Doctor, for the series as a whole. And I can't wait to see all that come true. But that's all I have for now. The season has come to an end. I'll be starting a new season soon enough. Uh, it's going to be, I think it's going to be Lock and Key. And thank you guys for getting this far and sitting through my rants. But... Uh, the next next episode reaction will probably be starting next week, and that's all I have for now. Please support the support the official release, and please check out the other videos I have on my channel. I recently released a video essay there, and I'm wondering if, what you guys think. And if you want, uh, please subscribe, leave a comment, leave a like, or if you want to leave a dislike. At least it tells me where I'm going. But. I need, I'd like some. I like the interactions you guys have been giving me. I haven't haven't acknowledged it on this channel enough, but you guys have done a great job. Thank you. This is that indie reviewer signing off. Papi descend.